everyone and welcome to ASU's TV show Culture Big Bang. This show is focusing on different students and faculty and associations around our campus that highlight different cultures from around the world. ASU's campus has so many different cultures and so many different students so we are here to teach you more about those cultures and students. This week's show is going to be about African Americans. So to start off, I have the Black Student Association president here with me, Latasha Moore. Latasha, thank you so much for coming on our show today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So just tell me a little bit you know, about yourself. Well, I am a communication studies major from Falcon, Arkansas in my junior year, and I anticipate graduating early, which would be this upcoming December. Oh, that's exciting. Yes, ma'am. So I hear that you are, so you are the president of the Black Student Association. Yes, okay, tell me what your organization is all about. The Black Student Association has several purposes, but a uh, large purpose that we have is kind of bridging the gap between African Americans and ASU. Um, as everyone knows, Arkansas State University is a predominantly white uh, university, and uh, some may find that intimidating once they get here and feel lost in the crowd, etc. So the Black Student Association is designed to be a home away from home, uh, but also educate the ASU community about how the African American culture is and educate our members on how to be successful throughout their four years here. Right, okay, so um, the Black Student Association holds several events on campus. I always see things and posters. Can you tell us about some recent events that you've had? Yes, ma'am, well, uh, as everyone knows, Black History Month was just last month, and that was a big month for us. Annually, the Black Student Association hosts BSA Week in the month of February. This week it was uh, February 17th through the 22nd, okay. and it involved a wide variety of uh, events. We co-sponsored with the Multicultural Center to bring in Mr. T.J. Holmes, um, did a talent show, mm -hmm. and we ended the week with our big uh, event, our uh, All Black Affair Gala and that's uh, meaning that the attire is all black. Right, mm -hmm. so do you notice that several students on um, campus come to these events or is it just, are you trying to reach out to um, everyone or just black students in particular? Yes ma'am, that is something that I've had to really push and say a lot verbally this year because a lot of people do think it's uh, exclusionary but it in no way is exclusionary. Um, we are welcoming everyone and throughout the events of Black History, uh, excuse me, Black BSA Week, we had a wide variety of cultures joining in for our festivities, but no, it's not exclusionary in any way. Everyone is welcome. Right. What is your favorite part about this organization? I mean, what just, why did you join this organization? Hmm. Well, I've been a member since I was a freshman, so I've been, ever since I've been at ASU, I've been in BSA, and mm -hmm. for me, it was a home away from home. At the time, uh, the president, I had known him from when I was um, in high school and, and below that, so of course that brought me in. And then um, just being around great people, uh, the board at the time, I really idolized them and they were all great role models. So just right. to be around that environment was really beneficial. So if you were to meet a freshman, what would you say to them to you know, get them to be a part of your organization? Hmm, good question. Well, in reference to that, I will say first that this probably has been the biggest year we've had for membership, and a oh, lot great. of people are freshmen, and they come enthused and excited. And so pretty much I would just inform them that it is a great way to start your year off being active because you can go from BSA, your next year you're doing SAB, your next year you're doing SGA. So it's a great foundation. Right, uh, foundation to become area. a leader on that's campus. That's right, that's right. And that's what you all want to do. You want your students to excel, right? That's right. That's right. How many members do you have right now in BSA? Whew. On file, around 100. Active, I'd say 50 to 60, 50 to 70. That's right. what we're more, and that's great in comparison to just having, you know, 10 people at a meeting. So it's, we've really come a long way. I'm, I'm glad well, to be a part Well, that's great. Congratulations on that. Um, so being the president of BSA and, you know, doing all these events for Black History Month and MLK Day, what does that really just mean to you personally, you know, just getting to do all this stuff for your culture? Mm -hmm. For me, and this is Latasha, not yes. BSA, <laughs> uh, I find it a great way to remember what our culture has been and what our culture has done, but also a reminder that we still have a lot to do. Right. Um, uh, sometimes uh, some may think, well, we're okay, we've made it to the promised land, et cetera, et cetera. And we have, but we still have a lot of work to go. So for me, it's just encouragement that we really can do great things. We have done great things and we still need to do so. 
So looking into the future, what are some goals that you have? You know, those things that you, you said you want to accomplish things. Mm -hmm. What's something? With you know? BSA or personally? BSA. Okay. Well, uh, the biggest thing right now, I just want to integrate the new board in really well um, because the board is the foundation of the organization. They dictate what will go on, etc. And so um, some goals I want to accomplish is just making sure they have thorough training and they're prepared so they don't feel as though they've just been given the position with no assistance. Um, of course, continue to have numbers grow, continue to build great leaders who stay in for all of their three or four years or however long it takes mm -hmm. them. So just continue to build up membership and making sure that the board members are prepared and excited about the position. All right. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank I really you. appreciate it. I learned so much more about BSA. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. And after the break, we will get to speak to an ASU student who is actually a BSA member and a program director at the Multicultural Center. Stay with us. The State Parks of Arkansas. 52 parks four beautiful seasons to experience them. Sponsored by this station, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association and your Arkansas State Parks, making beautiful memories. The Blue Planet Almost 75% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. Water, the source of all life on Earth. And a whole lot of fun in your Arkansas State Parks. So what are you waiting for? Boat, float, swim, ski, fish. Visit lakeandriverstateparks.com to plan your fun. Sponsored by this station, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association, and your Arkansas State Parks. Making fun memories. Welcome back to ASU TV's show, Culture Big Bang. I'm your host, Stacey Spivey, and today we're learning about African American culture and African American students on ASU's campus. And I have here with me Brianna Taylor. She is actually an ASU student and a BSA member. Brianna, thank you so much for coming to our show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Just introduce uh, yourself to the audience and tell us, you know, about yourself. Well, I'm actually from Little Rock, Arkansas. I'm 19 years old. My major is nutritional science and I'm a sophomore here at ASU. Okay, so you are a BSA member. What made you decide to be in this organization? Well, my freshman year I came to ASU, didn't have any friends, I didn't even know anybody, and a couple of the RAs in, my, in the hall I was staying in were in BSA and they were like, well, you may want to join this organization. You make some new friends and I joined and been a member ever since. Right, it's always good when you're a freshman you know, to just kind of have that group to go to because when you're at home, you know everybody, you right. grew up with these people, and then you come to college and you're just like, I don't know anybody. Exactly. So I can totally relate to you doing that. Um, you know, what is something that you do with BSA, like the events that you've been involved well, in? Well, I'm actually, I work closely with the events board. Mm -hmm. Like, I helped work with the Miss Essence pageant we had back okay. in last fall, and also I work closely with All Black Affair. I sold tickets and help with all those type of things. Okay, so you really like to plan events right. and coordinate that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. So um, what are some other things that you've been involved in? Did you do anything for the Black History Month um, and week? They have been doing um, get pie, we put money in, and then also we've been doing like you come down to the table in the union and you answer questions like Black History questions and you can win prizes. 
Okay. So we had a lot that going on. All right. So what does being a member of BSA mean to you? It's very important to me because I'm the type of person I never meet a stranger and I like talking with people. Mm -hmm. And it's like I have my friends, but I also have friends that I've got to know through BSA. And so we get to build a connection that's different from, you know, then you're my homegirl or whatever. That's kind of yeah. different, a different relationship. Because you can work on campus with them and do different activities. And right. Stuff. And we also do other things outside of campus. During BSA week, we had a bowling night. Oh, fine. And a lot of people from ASU came out. Okay, so y'all try to make it more of a community thing than just ASU, right? Right. Okay. Um, so, you are you involved in any other organizations on campus? Yes, I actually am. Okay. I actually work with some international students. Oh, you do? A program called TIES, which is the International Center for English. Mm -hmm. And I work with two young ladies, and we build a great connection. I kind of, they keep trying to tell me about how it is being an international student here at ASU. And I kind of tell them how being an American <laughs> is. And also, I'm vice president of Delta Epsilon Iota, which is an honor society here on ASU's campus. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so the two international students you work with, um, what exactly do you do with them? We meet every Tuesday, wherever they want to meet. Sometimes we meet in, on campus or off campus, whatever they're up to, I'm up to anything. And they kind of talk to me how it's hard to kind of change the time difference to adjust to being in, right. in a classroom full of Americans. Because when they first come to ASU, most of their classes are with international students. But now they're getting into their upper classes and they're full of Americans. And it's a hard adjustment for them. Right, because they're, so, they're not used to being over here and right. with us because we're completely different cultures. Exactly. What, what culture are they? They're Asian. Okay. So when you started working with them, what was the, the biggest or the most memorable experience? When I first started meet, uh, meeting with these two young ladies, I guess the language barrier. Right. I expected them not to know much English, but actually their English was pretty good, but it was still a barrier between me and them because they had to look some things up that I say. Okay. So is there anything that y'all did particularly like that was memorable? Like, Well, actually last Sunday we went to an Asian restaurant. Oh. And it was really weird. They didn't like the food at all. Really? Yes, they hated it. <laughs> That's funny. I guess because it's so different here than right. there. They said this is not real Asian food. They didn't think it was real. That's funny. Right. Have you introduced them to some American food? Yes. yes. They, we eat at Chick-fil-A. They oh, like the chicken favorite. sandwiches. That's so, funny. And then also um, they hate eating in the calf. So really? I got, yes, they hate eating in the calf. So we try to go off campus and eat other places right. where they can get like a better feel for. Right. Well, that's so great that you're doing that, you know, just kind of Welcoming, welcoming them here to our campus. Right. Yes, thank you so much for coming on our show. I really well, thank you for it. having me. Thank you. And we will be right back after the break. The State Parks of Arkansas. 52 parks. Four beautiful seasons to experience them. Sponsored by this station, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association, and your Arkansas State Parks, making beautiful memories. The Blue Planet. Almost 75% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. Water, the source of all life on Earth. And a whole lot of fun in your Arkansas State Parks. So what are you waiting for? Boat, float, swim, ski, fish. Visit lakeandriverstateparks.com to plan your fun. Sponsored by this station, the Arkansas Broadcasters Association, and your Arkansas State Parks. Making fun memories.
Welcome back to Culture Big Bang. I'm your host, Stacey Spivey, and I have with me the program coordinator of the Multicultural Center. Her name is Candace Williams. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Thank you for having me. All right, so just kind of introduce yourself to everybody. Well, as you mentioned, I'm Candace Williams. I work in the Multicultural Center. It's located on the third floor of the Student Union. Mm -hmm. And what our office does is we provide programs that are educational, cultural, and social for our students, um, which are all students, but our programs are specifically concentrated for minority and underrepresented student populations. So most of our events are going to be targeted towards specific groups, but this, our office is for all students because it's going to be everyone can learn from them. Right. So what do you do on an everyday basis in the office? On an everyday basis, it just depends on the time of the year. So right now, uh, we're in March, which is um, Women's History Month. Women um, is one of the organizations, not organizations, the populations that we work with. And so right now, our celebration, we are preparing for our Women's Leadership Conference. Mm -hmm. It's going to be open to our ASU students and faculty. It's going to be free. Our guest speaker for our Living Legends Luncheon, which is a part of the conference, is going to be Ms. Ginger Beebe. She's the First Lady of Arkansas. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. Oh, that's really great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so since you do things like different months, last month was Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Did you work with BSA any in that? Yes, BSA was co-sponsoring one of our events. We had a tribute to Black History Month with a speaker. His name was Mr. T.J. Holmes. He's yeah. a former CNN anchor, news anchor, and he came to speak to our community and our population. So it was open to everyone. So we had a lot of community members come out. We had a lot of students and faculty. And BSA uh, helped to co-sponsor that event. And as well, we work with BSA in some events as far as helping to get the word out about their programs, or we may let them be on one of our programs just to have collaboration efforts throughout the year. Right, and just to get more people involved in things yeah, on campus, course. right. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite part about working in this, you know, the multicultural center? My favorite part is working with the students. I love to be able to be a mentor to them. Sometimes they mistake me for being a student because <laughs> they say I look young. So, and it's fine because they feel, I feel like they can come to me. I can offer them advice on maybe school or anything that they might want to ask me. It's just I have an open door policy and I want them to be able to feel like it's a home away from home. Right. So I love working with the mentor relationship with them. Right. And I feel like you could be better on the one-on-one -on -one yes. level basis because you are a student here and yes. you can get to know them better. Yes, they can come Maybe more office. approachable to yeah. you. Yeah, I hope to think so. <laughs> okay, so um, what do you notice is the biggest, the hardest part about, you know, different cultures on campus, maybe them just like adjusting or whatever? One thing that I've noticed is that sometimes people would tend to get a little cliquish and so they'll stick with people who look like them and their own kind and so it's one thing that is a challenge in our office is trying to bring everyone together. And for instance, if we have a Hispanic American um, event that's well, targeted towards Hispanics, we want to make sure that everyone can come to that. It's not specifically for Hispanic Americans, it's for everyone. It's just an event that is going to educate you on their culture. Right. And so one of our challenges is to get everyone to buy into that event and knowing that it's not singling them out is just bringing everyone together for that purpose. Right. Um, and what do you, you try to do in your office, I mean your center, try to do um, to help these international students, you know, just to fit in here? Mm -hmm. And um, what are some certain like activities or events that you'll hold to do that? Well, sometimes at the beginning of the year, we will have a meet and greet. And so we encourage international students to come to our mm -hmm. meet and greet and talk about the multicultural center and what we do mm -hmm. and since we have five different um, specific targeted populations that we try to reach we also want to make sure that the international students are well knowledgeable of what we are putting on throughout the year so we may have also um, with a meet and greet they could talk about they can ask questions about how can I get involved what types of events is the multicultural center holding we also have um, a mini library in the multicultural center they can check out books and so oh, okay. those books also are from different cultures we have magazines that they can come look at we try to make sure that we're offering a wide variety of resources about different cultures so that whenever you come in the multicultural center you're going to be exposed to whatever we have that's going to talk about specific cultures so you're not only to help you know one certain type of international student adjust but for them to adjust to all the different cultures and just everyone to just kind of, you know, get mm -hmm. to learn and about everybody from yes. around the world. Like a big okay. melting pot. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly, a mm -hmm. big melting pot. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show thank today. Thank you for having me. And talking about the Multicultural Center. No problem. I definitely have to check it out now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you all for watching our show. 
don't forget to um, comment or suggest to us at our email listed below. And thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you learned more about um, African-American students on our campus and different cultures from around the world. Have a great day.